What's up, people? Hope you're having an awesome day wherever and whenever you're watching this. I'm your host, Eamon Hassan, and welcome back to another video here at Most Amazing Top 10. Honestly, I feel like more often than not, whenever I see paintings with faces in them, the eyes do usually just follow me around the room. But that's just me overthinking, or is it? There are so many cases of paintings acting weird or bringing about things they can't bring about that it blew my mind, and it'll probably blow yours as well. So, this is the top 10 scary cursed paintings you should never see. Emphasis on never. Starting us off from number 10 is The Anguished Man. Now the painter of this piece is unknown, but his painting is meant to be one of the most cursed paintings in the world. And after hearing how the painting came to be, you'll probably agree with that statement. Now although the artist is unknown, his story isn't. It's said that he mixed his own blood into the painting and soon after finishing it, he committed suicide. Somehow the painting got into the possession of Sean Robinson's grandmother who stowed it away claiming it was evil. When she died and Sean inherited it, he soon backed her statement. After he hung up the painting in his bedroom, his whole family started hearing crying and whispering late at night and seeing the appearance of a shadowy figure. Now I'm assuming the crying or whispering or the figure are the artist himself wallowing in his sorrow for eternity. I don't know, I couldn't tell you the backstory even if I wanted to, but that's just my guess. Coming in at number 9 is the eBay Haunted Painting. Great name, I know. The actual name of this painting is The Hands Resist Him, and it was painted by Bill Stoneham in 1972. The painting itself is a bit haunting with the doll girl and the hands coming out of the mirror, and why does this little kid look like an angry 40 year old? No one knows. Anyway, in Feb of 2000, the painting was dubbed the eBay Haunted Painting because many previous owners of the painting said it was either haunted or cursed. They described instances where the characters in the paintings would move at night, so much so they'd actually leave the frame altogether. Bill, the artist of the painting himself, even said the owner of the gallery in which the painting was first displayed and the first art critic who reviewed the painting both died within a year after looking at the painting. I mean, I think if anything we should be interrogating Bill and asking him why he put so much bad juju into the painting that it ended up being cursed. Why Bill, why? At number 8 we have Man Proposes, God Disposes. This this painting was done by Edwin Landseer back in 1864 and it does not depict man proposing or God disposing despite the title. The painting which is housed in the Royal Holloway at the University of London depicts the Franklin expedition shipwreck and the crew being ravaged by a bunch of polar bears. The painting began gaining a reputation of being cursed in the 70s. During that time a student committed suicide and left an incomplete exam paper behind as a suicide note which had inside of it the polar bear made me do it. As in the polar bears from the painting. Other students started reporting going mad after looking at the painting or failing their exams, which I mean if they were using that as an excuse just for simply failing, they should have really used a better one, in my opinion. But there were so many complaints and stories that the university started covering the painting in 1984 so no one could view it while sitting their exams. Even these days, students still refuse to sit near it during exams because of the bad luck that it brings. I'm really surprised they even had paintings that nice. All I had in my exam hall were giant clocks on those really annoying ass exam invigilators who just walked like just Filling our number 7 slot is The Rain Woman. The painting was done by Ukrainian artist Svetlana Telets, who said the piece took her a total of 5 hours to make, which I feel is like a record time for an artist. She'd never completed a painting that fast, but felt like her hand was being guided by someone else the entire time. The painting itself kind of looks like a creepy narrow caricature of the woman and the woman in black, and after she finished painting it, it was sold numerous times but the owners kept returning it almost immediately because they all reported feelings of fear, insomnia, unexplained sadness, anxiety and the feeling that they were being watched all the time if they were near the painting. I mean if you're an artist and you finish a great painting in 5 hours and you claim your hand wasn't even moving itself, the likelihood of that painting ending up screwed up is high. Which is why I'm not surprised it screwed with every owner that it had. Now at number 6 is The Dead Mother. I love how melancholy yet straight to the point these titles are. Many of you will know the Scream painting, but it was Edward Monk's Dead Mother painting that really got people's attention. The disturbing picture depicts a little girl standing with her hands on her ears in front of her mother's dead body. The painting has been displayed at countless art exhibitions around the world and many have claimed the girl's eyes incessantly follow them and that the child moves, blinks, 
things and sometimes leaves the painting entirely. Others have even said they've heard the bed sheets of the mother's bed rustling and seen the mother switch positions. I mean, I don't know how much I believe in a painting moving to that degree, but the masses have spoken. Coming in at number five is the portrait of Bernardo de Galvez. Bernardo was a Spanish military leader who helped the American colonies during the Revolutionary War. During the early 1900s, the city of Galveston opened the Galvez Hotel to honor him and they commissioned a giant portrait of him to go in the lobby. Soon after the Galvez Hotel opened its doors, guests started complaining the painting would make them feel extremely cold and that his eyes were following them. See, always the eyes, I told you, it's with every painting, they just follow you. The hotel started getting a reputation due to the cursed painting and guests used to come and take pictures with the portrait, that's half the reason they even went. But all of their photos would come out blurry or with a weird mist over it. They were just never in focus no matter how still you held the camera or how much you cleaned your lens. One guest however actually asked the portrait if they could take a photo and that was the first one that ever came out clear. Many believe the ghost of Bernardo haunts this painting and it seems pretty legit to me. I mean this story has pros and cons, I mean cons that painting is haunted by a ghost and ghosts are never good and pros at least he's a well mannered ghost. At number 4 is Love Letters. This one involves kids and I feel like whenever it's something scary kids just make it a hundred times worse. But anyway the Driscoll Hotel in Texas is a popular place for paranormal tourists around the world and a lot of why they visit is to do with this painting. In 1887 the US senator was staying at the hotel with his 4 year old daughter Samantha Houston. While chasing a ball she fell down the stairs and to her death and the painting in the hotel doesn't depict her but it depicts a girl that looks a lot like her. Many believe Samantha's spirit cursed the painting and some people have reported feeling nauseous and dizzy after looking at the painting and others felt like they were being lifted into the air in front of it. Some even claim the girl is trying to talk to them and that if you look at her long enough her expression starts changing. Guests have also seen a little girl playing with a ball throughout the hotel. I mean I don't need to add two and two together for you guys, that's pretty self explanatory and it's pretty backed up. Filling our number 3 slot is the untitled painting. Zgishov Bekshinsky was a Polish painter who liked painting in the style of dystopian surrealism. His paintings were mostly gothic or baroque and he never gave any of them a title. Honestly, his paintings look like hallucinations from hell or something you'd see while lucid dreaming but they're incredible. Weirdly enough he burned many of his paintings in his backyard before even showing them to anyone. Bekshinsky's life was full of tragedy, his wife died in 1998 and a year later Later on Christmas Eve, his son committed suicide and he found his body. Then in 2005, he was found murdered in his apartment with 17 stab wounds because he refused to give $100 to Robert Kupek, the son of his longtime caretaker. So the man really had a troubled life till the end, and many believe if you look at his paintings for too long, you'll face your own death soon after that. Also, can we just congratulate me for actually saying his name correctly? Polish subscribers, did I say his name correctly or not? Please support me. <laughs> Now at number 2 is the stagecoach painting. Now that's not its official name but we're just going to roll with it here. Back in 1994 a photographer took some double exposed pictures of stagecoaches in Tombstone, Arizona. When the picture finally developed he saw a headless man standing on a log next to the wagons that was 100% not there when he took the picture in real life. That photo ended up getting displayed all over town and then an artist called Laura decided to recreate it as an oil painting. It was already horrific once, why do we need two horrific things? Why? Why can't we have nice things? Either way, many believe the ghost of the man in the photo attached himself to Laura's version and started cursing it or haunting it. The first office space it was sold to quickly gave her back the painting, claiming despite straightening it every day, every morning the painting would just be crooked. They wanted to say their business had declined because appointments and papers were going missing and going awry. I mean, blaming a painting for your business failure? A bit of a cop out, really. Laura decided to just display it in her own house, but after she did, her garage roof started leaking despite workers finding no source for the leak whatsoever. When the painting was moved out of the garage the leak stopped but inside the house things started breaking and going missing. Now I'm not saying it was the headless man in the photo but I'm not not saying that. And finally at number 1 is The Crying Boy. This one was painted by Giovanni Bragolin at the end of World War II when he started painting portraits of Italian orphans crying. The prints in his collection became very popular in England but by the 80s things took a really grim turn. Many portrait owners began reporting that they thought their prints were cursed. Popular UK newspaper The Sun reported that in over 50 house fires the only thing left unscathed in every house were The Crying Boy prints. 
In one of the fires, the firefighters actually found a print face down on the floor, still in its frame, completely untouched by the fire that destroyed the rest of the house. A variety of psychics claim the curse is from all the hopelessness and misery the orphans felt, that they continue to haunt the paintings even after they died. And honestly, I believe that. That seems like a pretty viable explanation. How else would they survive so many fires? I don't understand. I mean, if your frame is wooden, shouldn't that burn? I don't know. I'm, I have questions. But anyway, guys, that's it for today's video. I was pleasantly surprised at how many cursed paintings there are with very decent backstories. I don't know if pleasantly is the right word, but you get what I mean. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And as always, I'm your host, Eamon Hassan, and I'll see you next time. Bye.